sometimes we invent new words in mathematics, like subspace, which do not exist in normal language. Sometimes we use words which already exist in natural language and give them a similar meaning, like independence. And sometimes words from mathematics enter the natural language. However, their mathematical de definition is very precise. Daily use is often more sloppy. So what happens is this sloppiness tends to carry over when people encounter those words again in mathematics. An important example of this is the word dimension. You know the word, you have some idea what it means, but what does it precisely mean? The dimension of a subspace. Let's see what it means precisely. Well, the dimension of a subspace is the number of factors in a basis. This number over here is important. So a number of factors, so that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, something like that. So the dimension of a subspace is a number. So if we look, for example, to R2 or Rn, in R2 we can have a basis E1, E2, for example, the standard basis. It contains 1, 2 factors. That means that the dimension of R2 equals 2. And you can easily generalize this to Rn, the dimension of Rn equals n. So, what about other subspaces? Let's take a look at some subspaces we encountered earlier. So, over here we have the four factors, v1, v2, v3 and v4. And we looked earlier at w, uh, the span h of v1 until v4. And we wondered uh, what's the basis for this subspace h. Well, first of all, we see that v3 and v4 are dependent on each other v4 equals minus v3, so shouldn't be in a basis. And we also found that v3 equals 3 times v1 minus 2 times v2. That means that v3 also shouldn't be in a basis. So we found a basis consisting of v1 and v2. That means that the dimension of h is again the number of factors in a basis equals 1, 2, 2. The dimension of this subspace h equals 2, because there are two factors in the basis. Let's look at the dimension of core A and null A. Over here we have our matrix A, which can be a row reduced to B over there. So we know a basis for core A is a set consisting of A1 and A2. Again, basis with two factors, so the dimension of core A equals 2. We also looked at the null space of A. We found the basis for the null space of A consists of one factor, so that means that uh, the dimension of the null space equals 1. And now we can add the two, dimension of the column space and the dimension of the null space, 2 plus 1 equals 3. Well, that usually doesn't have to do so much with each other. The column space and the null space are two completely different spaces. But the sum is 3, uh, and that is exactly the same as the number of columns. Why is that? Well, the dimension of the column space is the same as the number of pivot columns of the matrix uh, because uh, that's the amount of independent columns in A. The dimension of the null space is the same as the number of free variables. Here, we have one free variable. So that we, we see that the number of pivot columns and the number of free variables is always exactly the same as the width of the matrix. So even though call A and null A have nothing to do with each other, the sum of the dimensions is always number of pivots plus number of free variables, so the number of columns of the matrix. So relations like this over here always holds. Finally, true or false? I sometimes see dimension of call A equals R2. Wow, that's dreadful. The dimension of a subspace is always a number so it can never be R2, which is a set. So this one is certainly false. What about the other two, call A and call B? Well, the dimension of call A equals 2. But is call A equal to R2? Or maybe is call B equal to R2? Well, curious what you think about that. You can discuss those questions below.
in the forum. Let's see what you have to say about this.